the end of the week. But the start of Luke and Lewis. Check it out, check it out. Let's go. On 101.9. You ready? The Fox. Check it out, check it out. Let's go. It's Luke and Lewis on the Fox. We are back for an hour of power, aren't we, Luke? Yes, we are. Six or seven tonight, Lewis, and it's going to be a great show. Oh, yes. I understand that you're still recovering from a ferocious curry. Last night, my taste buds were tested, and I came out not the victor. <laughs> <laughs> and, mate, this won't surprise you, but uh, I'm bringing a bit of sport news to the show. I don't believe you. Mate, prove it. You know what else? I reckon I know more about it than you. No! (laughs) (laughs) It's Luke and Lewis. We're going to be talking about sport and curry after this. Luke and Lewis on the Fox. Luke Hidgel, are you ready? I've brought some sport stuff to the news. (laughs) Usually, show. if there is ever a sports discussion on this show, I would be bringing it and informing you about the sport, breaking down the rules, saying yeah. what a sport is. Yes. And you're just not into it. You never yes. have been, never played sport, never probably will. last time we talked about sport, I discovered there were two different rugby leagues. Is that what they're called? No, the two games? different types of rugby. Ah, okay. One see, is rugby league, just, one is rugby union. I see. I learned that and forgot it immediately. Yeah, and you still <laughs> can't wrap your head around the fact that there's two different types of rugby. Call them something different. Now, <laughs> I'm here to talk to you about the only kind of UFC. Uh, are you up to date with what Conor McGregor's been doing? Yes, Conor's been a naughty boy yes. lately. Um, now, what, what's happened, Luke, is Conor McGregor, uh, short backstory before this all happened, uh, one, uh, one fighter basically cornered Conor McGregor's friend, who's another fighter in a hotel. So Conor McGregor, instead of tweeting, hey, don't be mean to my mate, he flew from Ireland with 30 of his friends to America, mm-hmm. ran into the Barclays Center, which is an arena, yep. and ambushed that fighter in his tour bus, picked up a trolley, again, instead of saying, hey, mate, don't do that, into mm. his face. It's the old-fashioned way. Yeah, he, the old-fashioned way. He picked up a trolley, threw it through the bus's window, uh, smashed the window, and uh, hurt two fighters, cut them, so they can't mm. fight in the upcoming UFC event. <laughs> And then got arrested. Some people would argue that's more effective than a tweet. It sends a message. (laughs) I'm not saying it's the right message to send, but it certainly sends one. It's better than a DM for sure. Yeah. (laughs) He he slid into his tour bus. (laughs) Now, Luke, uh, the question that I've been battling with myself is now that Conor McGregor is sitting in a a jail cell after doing this, I still can't decide whether he's a genius or that's the dumbest thing that he's ever done. I just think he's stupid. He's really? clearly got a lot of money, a lot of time on his hands after the Mayweather fight, mm. and he's gone, yeah, I'll get the boys together, yep. and f- fly over and get arrested. I mean, that was clearly the plan. You know what? I don't think it sounded like they had much of a plan, because I, I got that. I don't think they thought too far ahead of, other than getting on the plane and bringing his friends to yeah. come and whatever they were going to do, they were like, yeah, let's get him. I don't think they actually thought until they got there, and I bet you he just saw a trolley and went, this will do. <laughs> Well, it what just seems done, like an unthought out plan. Well, instead of throwing a trolley and going, this will do, he should have seen a contract for a fight and then gone, this will do, and then just signed it. Yeah. Then he could have fought him for real. No trolleys needed. Yes. It's not the WWE, mate. But here's the thing, Luke. I think that it could be a genius plan because name another UFC fighter other than Conor McGregor. Can you do that? Uh... Yeah, Diaz. Yep, Diaz, but they've already fought. Here's the thing. I'm thinking that Conor McGregor might have done this to the other fighter so that Conor becomes the villain. Everyone cares about this guy. His name's Khabib now, and now they want Khabib to fight Conor. So I think what what Conor was doing, he's sniping us. (laughs) Wait. (laughs) So you're bringing us... Severus Snape from Harry Potter. I got the reference. The magician. (laughs) He's not a magician. He's a wizard. That's true. Magicians aren't real. Wizards are real. The one time you bring sports content to the show, yes. the only reference point you can make yes. is a Harry Potter reference. That doesn't count. <laughs> what do you mean? You could have related it perhaps well, to the uh, recent ball tampering cricket scandal where uh, perhaps you could have been like, oh, David Warner yeah, is trying to make, make himself look like the villain, so mm. Steve Smith looks like a good guy. Sorry, Luke, were you just speaking a different language then? Because I didn't understand anything <laughs> yeah. you said. Yeah, it was, it was Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, uh, this is a great one for people who work in customer service. They mm-hmm. will be able to relate to this one. Last night, I was uh, out and about and in a rush before my show, yes. um, which is at the Comedy Festival currently. Can you stop plugging your show, mate? <laughs> Shameless. So, 
<laughs> um, I was I was really hungry before the show. I couldn't even think. Uh-huh. I, was like, I just need food now. And there was a Korean restaurant next door to my venue, which mm-hmm. is out on Flinders Street. So that shows at seven thirty. Um, <laughs> and I was went you down- better have a story. <laughs> if this is just you talking about your show, I'm going to a song. <laughs> so. I uh, went to this Korean restaurant and uh, yeah. said, I didn't really like anything. You know, I'm a plain Jane. I'm a fussy eater. Yeah, I, I was going to say, Korean restaurant, yeah. that's a big risk I was for you. desperate. Yeah, so I went to the thing. I was like, what's the most basic thing in the menu? And the most mm. basic thing was curry and rice. I was like, well, no, sometimes... You never get a curry, man. That's well, sometimes, danger zone. Well, the, the curry shop near your house doesn't have spice. It's not a spicy curry. It's a yeah. mild curry, and I like that. But... Oh, so I asked her, I was like, hey, is it spicy? And she goes, oh, we don't worry. We have a non-spicy one. But before that, she's like, oh, is it takeaway? And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll be getting takeaway. Mm. And she goes, yeah, we can do a non-spicy one. No, because curry is made in a pot. Mm. So they can't take the spice out. So yep. she checked. You were like, hey, is there spice in it? And she was like, depends. Are you going to be here to in after you eat it or yeah no oh well then no it's and, made out of gold too yeah and sure enough i got to my venue yeah. and uh started eating backstage and how long before the show were you eating it about five ten minutes i was running pretty late and oh boy oh boy <laughs> this was the spiciest curry i've ever had lied to me straight up lied yeah like, yeah, yeah we'll do a mild one lied to your face did it affect the show oh but I was on stage, just my eyes were watering for the first five, five minutes. People thought I was crying, and I just had to explain that I'm just, I had a curry and I can't handle it. So, sorry, guys, I'm not crying. I've just had the most unprofessional choice of food before the yes. show. <laughs> and, and it's affecting you. Yeah, but it wasn't my fault. I mean, it was a little my fault for not for no, trusting the lady. I put my trust in her. But I, here's the thing. I think, Luke, that... Uh, people lying to customers. It's something that happens all the time. Like I used to work in a call center and we would fib all the time. Here's a classic lie we would tell customers. Um, look, I understand. Uh, no, no. The biggest call center lie just from being a customer is, don't worry, this will only take a few minutes. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Number yeah. one lie. We'll answer your call shortly. This, <laughs> yeah. this is the one that I used to hear. Look, I understand your concern and uh, I would be upset too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That That's a big fib. So we were thinking, guys, give us a call on 131060. When have you lied to a customer? I used to lie to people all the time. Uh, at, uh, I used to work at a golf course, mm-hmm. and I know nothing about golf. I'm not, I'm not a golfer. Yeah. don't really play golf. Well, you, work, I, but you worked like behind the hey, bar. People used to call me up on the golf course going, hey, mate, uh, how, how many meters till the uh, third hole? Also, what club preference should I use? Like, w- what club do you oh, they'd suggest? they ask for golfing tips. And I'm like, mate, you're looking at the third hole right now. You're on the course. <laughs> you're a better judge of that, right, me? I'm staring at a fridge, and I'm trying to serve customers. But I'll just be like, 200 meters, mate, four iron, and then hang up. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, you were recently lied to. I was lied to last night. I went to a Korean restaurant and I said, hey, I'm not really into spicy food. Uh, I can't handle it. Mm. And is this a mild curry? And she said, yeah, of course, we can do a mild curry for you. Uh, t- had takeaway after I left the restaurant, came home and, uh, well, sorry, at my show, had yeah. their Korean and boy, oh boy, <laughs> that was a spicy curry. Yeah. Nothing mild about that curry. <laughs> like there was no mistake. She just lied. Yeah, she to betrayed my face. you. And I think that people lying to customers is something that happens all the time. When I worked in call centers for customer service, uh, the classic one we would tell people like, yeah, yeah, we'll definitely pass that feedback on to our manager. <laughs> If I walked up to my manager and I was like, hey, I've got some feedback, he would laugh at me. <laughs> so uh, that, that was one that we always told them. Yeah. And uh, we've got a couple of callers. Cara, welcome to the show. What lies have you told your customers? There are so many lies we've told customers. Um, mm. we've what do you customers. work in first, Cara? I work in a telco company. Right. So, yeah, with phones and things like that. And we've actually told customers, so like, leave their phones in store. We'll see what we can do for you. And they've come back in a couple of days, picked the phone up. And we've absolutely done nothing. We've just left it in the back room because they just <laughs> oh. won't leave the store. <laughs> so you just say, yeah, yeah with so many people out the back are just working away at your phone and yep, then yep. just sitting there. You're just sitting there playing Angry Birds on it. Look, you get those customers that are just a pain sometimes and sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. Yeah, I Some do understand that. Some customers have even like, agreed with us that the phone's totally fixed and we've absolutely done nothing. So... It's all oh, well. sometime. There you go. So the placebo works on phones as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, Cara. And uh, Jameson, what's a lie that you've told a customer? So I work at a cafe in the city, and if we're really busy and you ask for skinny milk, there's a mm-hmm. 99% chance you are not going to get it. <laughs> oh, 
I didn't know this. No, I'm shocked I by knew this. this. I know people who work at cafes and they don't. Why would they stock it? Really? No, that's... we do stock it, but if we're, if we're busy, we'll just do jugs of the you've, normal milk yeah, and you've... just say it's skinny. Because oh. it only ever comes in like one litre packets and you just yeah. have three litres there and you're buying in bulk. No one's got the time <laughs> for skinny milk. Yeah, so you're just out there ruining diets like, like a used unit. unit. Absolutely. Well, it's not like it's a, like, it's not like you're, they're going to, you know, they're clearly not lactose intolerant or whatever. So yeah. You, yeah. You, you wouldn't do a thing where someone asks for like soy milk and yeah. Oh no, definitely regularly. not. No, That's cool. a bit too far. No, because yeah. you can tell because they would they would bring it back and be like, "This coffee tastes suspiciously good." Yes. Yeah, <laughs> this isn't soy yeah. milk. Yeah, and then they'd also have an af- uh, like an anaphylactic attack and probably pass out. But <laughs> another good point. <laughs> yeah, right. So maybe uh, n- no lying there. Mm. And uh, Monique, welcome to the show. What lies have Thank you told you. a customer? Um, I work in retail and I constantly tell customers that I have the item that they're about to purchase and it's one of my favorite items, even if I've never tried it on. Yeah. You're like, I hate that and it doesn't even look good on you, but I I absolutely hate it. But I'm like, yeah, I've got that. It's my favorite. I wear it all the time. It's just, it's in the wash. So I'm not wearing it today. (laughs) Your head, you're just thinking you can't even think of an outfit that that would go with, but you're like, you're like, yeah, just absolutely horrible, but I need to get it out of my store. So I'm like, it looks fantastic. You can wear it with anything. Hey, you've got to get that commission. I feel you. (laughs) I do. I do. (laughs) Jeez, who would have thought that uh, salespeople would be a little bit, uh, a little bit loose with the truth. Mm. <laughs> hey, Luke, um, it's, I want to inspire everyone by just telling the truth um, as an employee. Uh, here's some great music coming up on The Fox. It's Luke and Lewis. Luke, I understand that you're living the dream at the moment. Yeah. Uh, I've been uh, watching The Bachelor in Paradise. Um Ev- like just every every episode, I love it. Right, it's yep. my favorite show. Every week on this show, I do a recap, and you're right, it's dream television for me. Um, and I'm. Not many. I don't think many people are feeling this way about the new series, but I almost like it better than the actual Bachelor. Oh, really? Because they have flipped the script on this. It is very different. It's an all-stars match. All the past contestants are now in Fiji in yep. a resort together. Uh, they're they're fighting. There's love. There's drama. There's Osha's perfect hair. You yeah, can ski so down that slope. Really, it's such a good. De- sorry, I just love Osha. <laughs> really about his hair. So basically, it's like I'm not a celebrity. I need a job. Keep me here. Yep. <laughs> cool. And. Uh, Obviously, crowd favorite, Jared. You know about Jared. We talked about We talk about him frequently on the show. I love a bit of Jared. He joined the show this week. So he wasn't actually on the first week. Right. They, they deprived... Was he too busy following Sophie Monk around? Yeah. I think he was still outside a <laughs> window. But um, they... Thirsty Boy Jared has now joined the show. Yeah. And uh, much to the delight of the Australian public. Mm-hmm. And his first piece to camera... Uh, as he goes, hey, you might remember me from uh, Sophie Monk. Don't worry. From crying we know over you, Sophie Monk. Yeah. And crying over everything else. And he said, my favorite quote was, I have no regrets from that entire experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. How about when you cried on national TV because you thought someone pissed in your pot plant? <laughs> no regrets there. <laughs> we you proud of that one, William. <laughs> <laughs> what about the time where you cried and you were in your animal onesie because Blake was mean to you in front of the other boys at, at the sleep overnight? Yeah? <laughs> One of his crowning achievements yeah. in life. He's real proud of that. He's no got a regrets. I doubt that. <laughs> no, and his mum sent him a text going, just saw you crying dressed up as a giraffe. Yeah. Proud of you. <laughs> yeah. Love mum. <laughs> right? And... um. And then he and then he gets in, he's in, and he goes. He's talking to the other boys. He's like, "Hey, I'm just gonna take it easy and just have a quick mingle." Two minutes later, a girl walks in who looks a lot like Sophie Monk. Jeez, these producers are good. They're very good. <laughs> and he just turns around. He's he's distracted immediately. He yeah. just goes, "Oh, she's stupidly hot." <laughs> that's a quote. Isn't it? Yeah, that's Luke's a direct quote. That I'm not making this up, right? And uh, and and also perfect match, match man of heaven. This new mm-hmm. girl, Ali, uh, she's from season one yep. of the uh, Bachelor, Tim Robard season. My favourite batch out of the four. Yep, <laughs> everyone has a favourite. Who's yeah, yours, I, Lewis? I, mate? I couldn't tell you. I just want to hear more stories about Jared crying. <laughs> <laughs> right, her nickname, Ali's nickname from season one, just by the general Australian public, was she was known as the Stage Five Clinger. Oh, so they Perfect brought in match. Jared's clone. Yes. This is great. And, uh, so you think they, they'd get along? Of course. Yeah, they're, they're getting along yeah, on the show. That's good. And, uh, but th- my favorite observation and my favorite thing about the show, I don't think many people notice this while watching it. People always pay a lot of attention to all the drama. Mm. One thing I noticed was everyone on the show is incredibly sunburnt. <laughs> they're about three episodes in yeah. and they all look like shrimp. <laughs> There's... 
Well, just, yeah, because they're on an island and, yeah. and they are, they're, they're on a Bachelor show. Those sort of some of the whitest people on yeah. planet Earth. I mean, Jared already looks red and oh, episode three, he looked like Lightning McQueen. <laughs> oh, <was> just, <laughs> Did you just make a Cars reference yep. on our radio show? Well done, mate. Thank no, he's, uh, he's like painted the color of love, Jared. Yeah, it's incredible. And the thing is, though, I don't get how the producers, obviously, they stock them up with free champagne, free beers all the time. They constantly mm-hmm. got free food and nibblies. They're living it up in paradise. No one went, oh, here, champ, put on some sunscreen. SPF 50 plus. That is, get that it is in very, slip, that's slip, not very, slap. It's not very sun smart, is it? It's not. And I think skin care is incredibly important. Mm. And I think many people would agree. Yes. Um, it's, it's not a joke. You should take it seriously. They've been there for about a day. And it's it's really bad. They all look like it, on their pieces to camera when they talk to the camera. They look shiny, <laughs> like, like they've just bit. been putting on aloe vera just yeah. to, right before the shot. Yeah. And I think um, we've actually um, called up Banana Boat, mm, and, the sunscreen um, company. The sunscreen We're going to do company. something about this. Yeah, we thought this is ridiculous. They need clearly need a sunscreen sponsor. So mm-hmm. we called up Banana Boat and uh, convinced them to partner with The Bachelor in Paradise. And um, big thanks to the people at Banana Boat, because uh, they've actually come back to us with this. They're on an island. Banana Boat. They're getting burnt. Banana Boat. Not just physically, but emotionally. And we can fix half of that with... Banana Boat. Banana Boat. Jared looks like Elmo. Banana Boat. Brett looks well done. A cooking term. Florence and Tara need to apply some aloe vera. Like, seriously, they've been on the island for about three days and they all look like shrimp. Yeah, I was watching it. I thought everyone was wearing a red T-shirt, but they weren't wearing any T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Luca Lewis on the Fox, and today it is time for this. Businesses exposed. Ah, you've been a naughty business. That's right, guys. The time has come for me to expose a business. It is something that I do regularly on our, on this show, and uh, you better watch out. If you've got an ABN number, I can hear you slamming on the brakes, mm. looking for an escape route. <laughs> mm. Turning down an alley, hiding in the dark. Mate, but you bring light to those shady businesses. That's right. Anybody who cop an ex- expose at any time, mm-hmm. I'm always ready. I'm always strapped. Who's copping the wrath today? <laughs> Springfield Family Farm. <laughs> You're a horrible person. <laughs> I just realized I said Springfield. I meant to say Springvale. Right. Springfield is a town on The Simpsons, everyone. Yep. Not a real not place. A real place. <laughs> <laughs> but let it be known, Springvale Family Farms yeah. is copying it. Uh, Springvale Family Farms, it's like a little hobby farm. And what they do is they just sell eggs out the front. And it's like an honesty box system. So you can put $5 in. So really... It barely meets the requirements for a business, but if you've got <laughs> shady practices, that's like you get next exposed. That's barely a lemon, like a barely a lemonade stand. Yes, I am. I do realize that I'm punching down. I'm basically nuking down on yeah. this one. <laughs> but you know what? If you've been sometimes shady, he punches up. Sometimes mm. you go to a corporation. McDonald's has copped it in the past. Yes, but today you're just absolutely punching a local business in the teeth. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So uh, Springvale Family Farms uh, was driving past it. Uh, re- Recently, and it had a big sign out the front of it that said, Breaking news, we are staying open in 2018. Mm -hmm. That is not news. (laughs) That is not news. Staying open, you, you don't need to inform anybody about that. Inform us if you're closing. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Not even. I'm not interested in hobby farms. No, exactly. Set up a mailing list for people who are kind of interested in that obscure world of hobby farms. Tell them that you may be opening and or closing to the rest of us. Lose the sign. Yeah. I'm sorry, Springvale Family Farms, but no one was wondering, geez, I wonder if they're <laughs> open in 2018, uh, because that'll be a real shocker. Okay, but you know what, Luke? You know what's even worse than that? That was the first point. This is the second point. It's even worse than that, right? I was driving past them at 10 p.m. at night, and they were closed! Oh, my God, I'm so exposed. (laughs) That's right. They lied on their sign. Staying open in 2018? Mm. No. More like staying open periodically during business hours in 2018. (laughs) (laughs) Boom. (laughs) Business is exposed. Never do it again, Springvale Family Farms. You have been warned. <laughs> Today we are joined by a special guest, a comedian and a good friend of ours, Gabe Hogan. Welcome to the show, Gabe. Thanks for having me. No, that's fine. Your, your name is one that I always have to s- make sure to say slowly, because yeah. otherwise it just comes out as Gabe Hogan. <laughs> 
<laughs> Which is kind of funny now, but in high school, not so much fun. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's, we're halfway through the Comedy Festival now in yep. uh, Melbourne, and your show starts tomorrow night, I believe. Yes, yes. Are you excited? I'm very excited. I've been training hard. I've been going out every night, having yeah. lots of fun, and the party's about to finish because now I've got to be serious. Yes, because yeah. there's always two weeks, same with my show, either side, where you do get to have a bit of fun and enjoy the festival. But uh, when your show's on, hard mm-hmm. to enjoy. So yeah, have you been going out? Oh, as much as possible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, just going to the festival club and having yeah. a bit of a dance. Getting the and, dance floor. Yeah, of course. You're Are you not much seen of me? a dancer? Oh, no. You've obviously seen me dancing, Lewis. Uh, not not too many times. Mm. I've, Lewis I'm, is the worst dancer. <laughs> well, I, I think I'm so tall that I feel like even if I was a good dancer, I would look ridiculous. Like, even if I was a classically trained ballet dancer, six foot eight in tights, ridiculous. He just looks like he's doing jujitsu just in the <laughs> middle of the dance floor. <laughs> I shouldn't should laugh so hard. I shouldn't laugh so hard, but you're tall and lanky, a bit like me. Yeah. And I have trouble dancing. I think it's because we're tall and lanky. I think so. I was at the club, lo- at the club, at the festival club at last club. night. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, just can't believe I said yeah. that. The, the, the festival club, it's... Uh, How it's old are you, 18? For, <laughs> it's the festival club, if you don't know, it's a club for comedians, basically stand-up comedians always mm-hmm. hang out there. So if you're picturing anything cool, nah. It's not cool. It's, <laughs> it's not comedians cool. dancing, not cool it's at all. never cool. It was totally everything not cool last night because I was mm. having a bit of a dance. I'm wiggling away there and yeah. uh, actually someone stabbed me with an EpiPen. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I thought I was having a seizure, so um, <laughs> not the first time that's happened. Yeah, I, I struggle with elbowing people in the head just by accident. If I just if I just move my arms at all, my elbows are face height, so uh, I need to set up a perimeter before I want to have a boogie. So, I feel like you'd be the guy in the middle of the floor where people would like use to find their friends. It's like, yes. oh, I'm next to the real tall guy. <laughs> no, I, I really am, and I never get lost ever. Because I did that last just look night. Up. I, I was lost with them and I, we're outside the Melbourne Town Hall and I called my girlfriend. I was like, where are you guys? She's like, I'm outside the Town Hall. I'm like, no, you're not. I can't see Lewis because she was with you. Yeah. And, uh, and she goes, and then you were standing behind a pole. And I, was, <laughs> I was blending in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Gabe, this show is called Pretty, Witty and Gabe. What is the show about this year? Uh, The show is, I mean, it's basically about me being an idiot. Uh, I've had a lot of head injuries during my life and every day's a surprise. Uh, You never know what's going to (laughs) happen one day to the next. Uh, Actually, it turns out I figured out not long ago in my mid thirties that I'm a lesbian. (laughs) Oh, right. (laughs) Yeah. Didn't see that coming. Who knew? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> An astonishing discovery. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, and is that? Do you remember that... the moment where you were like, "Huh"? Uh, yeah. So you lived your? Did you live your whole life with not even suspecting that? Ah, uh, uh, I I think I did I had suspicion. I shouldn't say suspicions, but I was mm. but I was with a guy for a long time. We're in a long term relationship. Yeah. Um, and like when I thought about women, I was like, like the lady parts, I was a bit like, ew. But then when I think about guys' parts, I'm also like, ew. Yeah. I don't so. think anyone has, I don't think anyone has great parts. Like, I've never seen it. <laughs> I've never seen them. Like, Those are some good bits. I've never seen that. <laughs> Doesn't matter what gender, any bit's a bad bit. Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, it turns out we're all just really immature. Yeah. So. <laughs> and ugly. Yeah. No, you're all beautiful. Maybe that's just you, mate. <laughs> uh, well, see, show us. Well, you got, nah, don't do that. Don't do that. That's harassment don't pretend for you're sure. Into that. All right. <laughs> So the, the show's called Pretty, Witty, and Gabe. So yeah. is there a reason why there's the and? Yeah. Well, you're looking at me. Uh, <laughs> yes. Well, she's so, a major part of the show, I'd yeah. imagine. I know what Lewis is going at. He's like, there's pretty, there's witty, and then there's Gabe. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Look, I'd like to think I'm witty. Mm-hmm. Definitely Gabe. Okay, good. So these are attributes about you, <laughs> yeah. not just, just not th- not. There's not two other people that are pretty and witty. And no, 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 no. It's a yeah. It's that's a good. solo show. Yeah. It's, a solo, it's, a, it's a pun. Like there's there was yeah. a movie called Pretty Witty and Gay. Oh, okay. And because Gabe sounds like gay, I right? I've completely that. missed that reference. Is it a rom com? It's no. It's like I think it's a musical. Right, and that's why the the reference was lost on us. Yeah, Where yeah. two twenty year old guys <laughs> yeah. just going, I don't know what you're you talking about. You don't watch about. many musicals. <laughs> yeah, no, I I know of Wicked, never seen it. Yeah, okay, all right. Well, I'm gay. Is that so a I know movie? All the musicals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, how how many nights are you doing? Are you doing just two weeks straight? Uh, well, eleven shows. Eleven so, shows. Yep. And so which which day are you no not Wednesday. doing? No Wednesday. No Wednesdays. No Wednesdays. Yeah. 
Brilliant. Yeah. Guys, well, you guys can catch that. You're starting your first shows tomorrow. Tomorrow night. It's at the uh, Joint Bar, the Sub Club, and uh, on Elizabeth Street. Uh, tickets at trybooking or comedyfestival.com.au. Search Gabe Hogan, not Gabe Bogan. <laughs> and uh, yeah, get down and it's a great show. Starts at 6.15. We've seen Gabe. She's great. And uh, we recommend her. Thanks for coming on the show, Gabe. You're welcome. Have a great night. Luke and Lewis on the Fox. That brings us to the end of the show, guys, because Luke apparently has something more important to do. We're cutting the show short, unfortunately. Uh, no, I have a comedy festival show to do. Oh, so you're saying it's not more important? Well, yeah. Well, yeah, it Sprung is. bad, ladies uh. and gentlemen. He <laughs> thinks his show is more important than our show. Selfish Luke Kidgel. Well, not impressed. yeah, fair enough. <laughs> no, but you're... Buy tickets to LukeKidgel.com. <laughs> hey, stop. No plugging. <laughs> So Luke's going to be running uh, to his show. It's in a, true. I'm about to run down the now. street. I've bought runners. Um, and so if you're <laughs> driving down Flinders Street right now, pull over because I'm like an ambulance and I'm not stopping for anyone. As punishment for plugging his show, please try and slow him down. <laughs> so we're going to be six to seven next week as well, but then we are back to normal. This is Luke and Lewis on the Fox. We'll see you next Sunday. Luke and Lewis on 101.9 The Fox.